Has this ever happened to you? You met someone like no one else you'd ever known and you fell in serious like with them and you thought the other person felt the same way about you and then you slept together and you realized too late that you just signed up to be friends with benefits and now you're heartbroken. This is really common for people who grew up with abuse and neglect during childhood and all the trauma that goes with that. If that's you, you probably had no idea how what feels like true love could suddenly turn out to be nothing. And unfortunately, you didn't know what to do next to stop the situation from further traumatizing you. So my letter today is from a young woman I'll call Star, and she writes, Hello, Anna. Uh, when I was 16, I was diagnosed with cancer and had years of really complicated treatment that left me with a lot of problems. Once I was back on my feet, I was around 20, and I absolutely didn't know how to be a functional person, as childhood wasn't much of a happy time, too. All right, I've got my pink pencil. I'm going to circle things I want to come back to on a second reading, but let's go all the way through Star's letter and see what's going on. Okay. I used to be neglected, always compared to everyone in my family, and as a result of that, bullied and neglected in my school too, and just didn't feel like I was in some way important or likable. Once I felt like I could have control over my life and be functional again, I spent my time obsessing over studying and getting somewhere in life and completely neglecting my love life because I still didn't feel beautiful or worthy enough for a relationship. Last year at work, I met a really cute guy and we clicked instantly. We shared the same humor, we loved spending time together, and instantly had this feeling that we've known each other for ages. He started approaching me, giving me the much needed attention, appreciation, and made me feel relevant and special. This made me feel things I've never felt before. So one night, we just hooked up at his place and I instantly started developing feelings for him. He called me the next day just to tell me that he is still not over his ex-girlfriend and is way too tired and mentally drained to start a new relationship. It just shattered my heart to pieces. I felt unworthy and unlovable as this was my first ever experience with love whatsoever. I agreed upon staying friends, but I knew it wouldn't work. We were still working together and we had to stay professional too. A lot to circle here. After a month or so, we hooked up again. This time he flew back home right after and ignored my existence for two weeks before reaching out again. We didn't talk about what happened and I was way too hurt and scared to bring it up so to not spoil our so-called friendship. A few months went by. We are trying to keep this friendship alive, but really the only way we get to spend time together is at the workplace. I still have feelings for him and I've told him all that, but now I think that most of this time I've been living in a delusion I created myself just not to feel the loneliness I've had before I met him. I tried to fill the void with this delusion of love. I started overanalyzing his every move, stalking him and his friends on social media. Obsessive, I tried to initiate things again, but every time I approached him, he would distance himself more and more until he finally, he was really obvious about not wanting to spend time with me outside of the workplace anymore. He never admitted to having any feelings for me or thinking about me, but he never denied it too. Sometimes he would totally act like he liked me a lot again, showing me affection and care. The next day he was distant and cold again. So it has put me in this delusion where I'm hoping that one day he will come back to me and love me again like he once did. I'm feeding myself this delusion of us being real soulmates and I'm not able to break out of it and start a healthy relationship with someone who will show me real love. I'm asking for your advice as I'm just not able to move forward with this situation. How do I let go of it and what can I do to feel better? Okay, Star, I got gotcha. you. I can help. All right, I'm so sorry this happened to you. This perfect storm of having a rough childhood where you were neglected, you were compared to others, you were bullied. I mean, that's, that's plenty to send somebody on a path of difficult relationships and CPTSD symptoms. But then you got cancer. And I, don't, I can't even pretend to know what that's like. I've had serious medical problems in adulthood, you know, but at least my personality was mostly formed and I had the autonomy to make decisions for myself and things like that. 
I can only imagine what that was like for you, Star, after your childhood and after having parents you couldn't really count on. You don't talk about it much, and I appreciate your referencing the past without trying to get into a big story. <clears throat> but I can read between the lines here that you were very alone. And, um, yeah, I know what that's like. When you've been through a very hard time all by yourself, anything comes up on the horizon, looks like it's a knight in shining armor. And that has happened to me. So I feel for you. You haven't done anything wrong, all right? But I can teach you how to avoid doing this again. Okay. So you met this guy. And he, he, you, you laugh together. You love spending time together. And instantly had this feeling that you'd known each other for ages. Okay, what was that? You say that he loved you once and he stopped loving you. So first, I just want to say it's I, I, from everything you're describing, I think you're right. I think he was interested in a relationship at first, but something changed. Okay. Something changed. And so I'll talk to you about that, but let's just deal with the possibility that he's just a big player and he finds vulnerable women and he acts all friendly and nice and uses them. And that's possible too. And what I'm going to teach you is going to help you either way. Okay whether he had bad intentions or good intentions that fell away and you just couldn't deal with it. Either way, all right? Um, the solution is the same. Oh gosh, I just want to say again how nice that must have been to have somebody who to crack jokes with and who liked spending time, time with you. I bet that just animated you and kind of brought hope back to your life. I can see how that is. Okay, so he started approaching you. He gave you much needed attention, appreciation, made you feel relevant and special made you feel things you'd never felt before, which I assume is like falling in love, maybe sexuality. So one night we hooked up at his place. So it's interesting that you use the word hooked up because you just preceded it by how, what an incredible connection you had. And then when you say hookup, you know, maybe you mean something different, but my understanding of hookup is it's a total like non-love kind of sex act. Uh, it's just people kind of like for convenience using each other and haha, it's fun. Goodbye. Don't even think about it. So right there, um, I can see what happened. I can see you thought you had to be cool about that, but I shouldn't think you were cool at all about that. You were falling in love with him. You were becoming yourself. You were having like that best experience that love can bring until then you, th you thought that you were, that it was two way, right? And so then you call it a hookup. So can I just suggest to you, Star, first of all, as a person with trauma, you know, both medical and family of origin trauma, consider just taking hookups out of anything that you would ever do anymore. You're, everything you say here is like, you want to be loved, you want to be validated, you want to be made to feel special and relevant. Hookups don't do that. In fact, hookups cancel out that opportunity. So... You know, what if you just didn't do that? Would you be willing to date in a new way that has a little bit more of a ramp to where you would make that decision to have sex with somebody? And it would be where you have enough information to find out what you're getting into. And you'll never again be hit by a total, well, let's not say never. It's possible for people to deceive, but it would be very unlikely that if you can take your time with this decision and get to know somebody and ask questions that are your honest questions and get answers that are truly satisfying and honest answers, that you can then have choices about who you end up, you know, bonding with through sex. And it will never again have to be somebody who doesn't care about you and who's not going to stick around. Actually, I'm not getting that he doesn't care, but just that he can't deal. But they're functionally the same thing. So you hooked up and you instantly started developing feelings for him. So from what you, the story you're telling me, you already had feel, feelings for him, which is why you did that. Yeah, developing feelings for somebody. It's weird how so much in this in this day and age, developing feelings for somebody, it's like we hold it kind of in a confused manner, like it's a problem. Definitely keeps you from being cool girl who can, who's like, I'm really cool with casual sex, hooking up, awesome, you know, that's fine. Call me, don't call me, whatever, you know, I'm really cool with that. That's kind of what these situations, that's the persona that so many of us feel like we have to play. And there's a male equivalent too. All right. It's the nice guy. <laughs> the nice guy. No, that's okay. I'll keep helping you even though you don't treat me well. Um, so we just say, I'll just keep being, uh, you know, sexually available to you even though you don't care about me. That's what cool girl does. And yes, there's a, there's a certain kind of uh, person who loves cool girl because it fits what they're looking for. There's another kind of person, and this might be who this guy is, is that wasn't what they were looking for, but that's 
what you basically signed up for. And so they kind of made a calculation on their side. You know, maybe they were lonely. Um, maybe this guy, maybe he was lonely. Maybe he, you know, he was still hurting from a relationship that he wasn't over. Maybe he was craving companionship and sex and all that stuff. And you were just there like me, 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 me. And he was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Why not? But when your feelings aren't really in it, you know, people, it's not going to feel great. It starts to feel really terrible on both sides, right? When it's not there, both people were looking for something else. So again, I can't read too much into where he's coming from, from what you tell me, but I just sort of try to take you at face value about this. Yeah. So you had sex with him and I guess that was your first time, right? So then he called you the next day. Oh, it's him. It's him. What's he going to say? Just to tell you, he's still not over his ex-girlfriend and is way too tired and mentally drained to start a new relationship. All right, so those are telling excuses. First of all, being tired is an excuse that people use sometimes, and not being over an ex is an excuse they use sometimes. I'm just going to give you tough love fairy talk here, all right? People will say whatever they feel like they can get away with saying to hurt you the least. Most people don't really want to hurt you. Maybe he feels guilty. But what I'm guessing is that what he encountered when you guys had that hookup is more than he bargained for, that you had feelings and expectations that kind of freaked him out, that he hadn't really, you know, calculated that into what he was expecting. And so it's, it's really easy, especially if people are drinking, I think especially for men, but it could be anybody. But if sex is just sitting there like, here it is, have some, you know, there is pretty hard for them to say no. It's hard to say no. Men have to have strong principles consciously that that's not what they want, or it has to be something they're way not into. So that's what I'm reading. This is, I, I don't know, people are going to weigh in on this, but I think he was interested in you, but you ended up being perhaps too real or your needs were more than he actually could deal with, or maybe your needs were coming out in the, in, prematurely stuff that was would be totally appropriate in a three month old or a six month old relationship about how you felt and what you wanted you know that you don't know because you know what <laughs> you were like 16 when this whole part of your life shut down and before that you were traumatized anyway and invalidated you haven't had a chance to be a teenager and navigate boy girl dynamics so this is your first time so i just want you to just give yourself a big hug and a big forgiveness and just go okay that was my first go okay <laughs> that didn't feel that good and you know it's happened to everybody it's happened to everybody and you're not a big failure or anything you're you're learning how to do this and to the outside world you look like a early 20s i think you are right you look like you probably have more experience than you do and more awareness but they have no idea what it's like to walk around with an abandonment wound you know with the wounds of neglect and how that how that affects your thinking and how it makes you behave in relationships so somebody you know they show you a bit of love and affection and interest that attachment wound will just go you know are you my mother <laughs> do you remember that dr seuss book we talk about it here sometimes no, it's not Dr. Seuss, but it's like that. It's one of those books. <laughs> I owned it. Little bird goes around, are you my mother? Are you my mother? And thinks all the animals are its mother. And that's like us, right? If you didn't get parented properly, the minute you get into a romantic relationship, it'll just activate all that stuff in you that's just been sitting there dormant. Like when, oh, when is somebody going to just totally love me? And had you had that, enough when you were little you obviously had some like all of us got some maybe this much or this much but you needed this much and so there's these just these needs these emotional needs in you that are just like little alligators like I, 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 i'm looking for something here and people sense it and they're like whoa alligators i was i thought this was going to be roses you know <laughs> and it's too much and it's i know it's sad it's a terrible terrible shame because i'm sure you're wonderful and he probably is too. And he couldn't deal with the wounds that you now have. So it may be too late for him, but I, I promise you there, there are going to be even more meaningful relationships on your horizon as you go forward in life, more, more lovely, beautiful, connected. It will come. A lot of times, you know, the ones that feel the most connected are happening when you have the giantest vacuum of your own needs met.
the needs that you're going to meet for yourself before you meet somebody. When you're not walking around with, I know this sounds like rocket science, right? I just, I mean, all my life and certainly in my 20s, people were like, you just need to love yourself. You just need to like meet your own needs and then go into a relationship like la 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 la. And it doesn't like, they're just like, gak, 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 gak. I don't even know what they're talking about. Like, what do you even mean? There are a lot of statements like that. Like, you just need a good therapist. It's like, oh, really? Well, where are they? I, I keep failing to find them. I go to one and it's not helping. There's no catalog of good therapists. There's not, you know, there's, it's just a thing that people say when they're in that privileged position of having benefited immediately from something and it was easy and they're just like, just do what I did. It's so easy. Well, it's not that easy for people with CPTSD. It's not that easy. And we're teaching each other now, okay, here's what you do. So I've been doing, I've been going around this block for a long time and I'm telling you, okay, here's what I've learned, right? The trick is you can't really play the casual sex game like many other people can because you're not equipped with the deck of cards that always tells you what to do in this situation and that situation and how to actually be kind of neutral about the whole thing. I mean, I don't know why anybody would want to be neutral about it, but sometimes for some guy, you know, you just you want him to like you, right? But you get to play this different path, all right? You're going to go down a different path where you go... Uh, I'm going to get to know somebody before I even kiss them because I know kissing, kissing is a slippery slope, okay? This comes up in a lot of my letters. All we did was kiss, but kissing, it's basically, you know, you just basically open the big front door to the sex house. <laughs> That's what it is. So, yeah, you know, from a trauma point of view, once you start activating all the physiology of sex, your bonding mechanism just kicks in. And so, you know, I don't know, you go this far, you go that far. Certainly there, you know, there's relative intensity that goes with all of that. You're going to find out where your attachment wound shows up by going very slowly so that when it does and you suddenly go, ah, I'm freaking out, you know, this person doesn't even like me at all. And I think I'm going to start crying and I just, you know, I'm going to have to walk out of the restaurant or something before that happens or when the feeling comes up, when you're going very slowly and you have tools and support, I can't say enough. We'll talk about this in this video, tools and support. All right. Tools and support. That's what we all need. But when you have that and you go slowly, you can go, okay, hold on. I'm freaking out. You can just go into the bathroom of the restaurant, call your friend and go, I'm freaking out. This is happening. This is happening. And your friend is like, okay, slow down. Hold on. Maybe you write a few fears and resentments. Like I teach people, you get that down. You, get, you, you just come back to reality and your friend might say something like, you know, hon, I think you need to figure out like where he's coming from. And you go, well, how am I going to figure that out? You ask him. And I realize that it's uncomfortable and sometimes it's out of the line of common etiquette to ask somebody straight out. But if you don't know where they're coming from, you, you do get to ask. And if anybody's going to be freaked out by your asking, all it's going to do is accelerate the inevitable end. Like somebody who really likes you, if you ask them, they're going to be like, oh, yay, she asked. I think that means she's interested too. Like you want that guy. You want that guy. So don't be afraid to be yourself. And if you're confused about things, don't pretend, don't act like somebody you're not. But go your, lay your grubby cards on the table, girl. Like, say it. Just say, huh, you know, this is a date, right? <laughs> and they can say, um, yeah, kind of. And you can say, kind of? Can you be clear about that? Because I think if, it's, if we're not dating, I got to kind of handle this differently. <laughs> you get to say that. Like, is that so terrible? No, it's not. But it feels terrible. And I'll tell you why. Because in addition to just like any time being honest and showing our vulnerability and liking somebody when you don't know if they like you is a vulnerable position. Yes, that's hard. But what makes it harder is when you have an attachment wound that's exaggerating the incredible importance of this person. Like it's life or death. Like either they're going to like you back and everything's going to be amazing or they're not and you're going to die. That's what CPTSD is telling your nervous system. And, you know, you might like intellectually know better, but that's what you're living through. That's what's happening. So that's why you need your friends and you need your tools so that even when you feel like it's going to kill you, you get lots of love and support from other people going, oh, no, no, Star, it's not going to kill you. We're going to be here for you. You can walk away from that restaurant. You can cut this date short. You can leave the door open to talk about it later with him. You can, you know, you have all these choices, but you don't just have to like march off the cliff to totally bonding with him through sex and then hiding how you really feel about him and becoming ashamed of yourself 
that sex makes you feel like you love someone because that's what it's for, okay? That's what it's for. That's normal. And so if you're talking yourself out of that, you're kind of robbing yourself of the sweetest, most lifeful part of yourself. It's a lovely part of you. It's a really important part of you. In fact, it's like for the, for the universe as a whole, it's like one of the most precious energies there is, you know? A young woman who through sex like falls in love and you know bonds like that's a beautiful beautiful thing so you don't have to just like throw it around you know you get to like treat it like this very precious part of yourself and that precious part of yourself flourishes in an environment of emotional security honesty love choices support from friends so that doesn't all all your all your sense of life and death doesn't go on this one person you don't know yet even when you know them well even when you've been married 50 years you're going to need friends so your heart went to pieces you felt unworthy and unlovable that was your first ever experience with love you say love but i think you mean sex because that's not love it gets better it gets better hold out for that okay i agreed upon staying friends <sighs> The great myth of staying friends with somebody who just broke your heart. Yeah, but you know that. You said this. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't work. You did know it wouldn't work, and it's not working. But it's staying friends with somebody you're in love with is a lie, right? It's basically um, trying to hide how, who you really are and how you really feel with that most powerful force of the universe. You ain't going to hide the most powerful force of the universe. Like, it's going to just, like... <laughs> it's like a, it's like the little dam, right? <laughs> What's that? The little Dutch boy. It's like an old story. You know, there's a big dam and it's going to break and there's a little hole and he puts his finger in the little hole <laughs> and he's trying to stop. He's trying to stop the whole dam from breaking. <sighs> the dam's going to break. So your for the force of the universe, your love, your, your, your need, the, the whole of you, the beautiful creativity, powerful potential of you mixed in with the trauma you've had and all the good things you bring, all of it, you know, it's a force to be reckoned with. So don't even think of hiding who you are. Don't pretend you get to work on your healing. You don't have to like be, you know, um, a nun or anything. You can date, you can become friends with guys, but all I'm saying is go slowly and never ever pretend to be friends with somebody you're in love with. You're not friends. Here's, this is tough love time. Okay. It's a manipulation. It's to get them to keep hanging out with you so that you can keep trying to find a way to get them to love you. But pr I promise you, if they're going to love you, sometimes people who have rejected you will later come around and realize they love you. That happens sometimes, but the conditions that it happens under is oxygen. All right. Sometimes Maybe things were, you know, the conditions weren't right for them. They weren't ready. They're, you know, who knows, uh, you know, maybe you were acting to this or to that. But when the, all the pressure comes off is when they can now consider how they feel about somebody they got to know a little bit. So the best thing you can do if you love somebody is just let space occur around them. Don't pressure them. Don't keep initiating contact. You know, if you want to, I'd say if somebody has broken up with you, don't, don't contact them at all. That's just a rule of thumb. All right. Unless they have your stuff and you have to arrange to get it, in which case you can have your friend contact them. All right. If he contacts you and he's like, oh, you know, hey, let's go, let's go get some coffee. Because, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, it's a narcissist. He's manipulative. Ah, maybe. <laughs> most likely, though, he's just a person. He's a person who's kind of lonely like most people, and he knows that you're, you like him and you're open to being friends, and it's nice to have coffee with somebody. It's also very nice to be adored by somebody, and especially if you, have, you can fall back and say, but I made it clear that we're just friends and I'm not interested, and then you're not to blame. So I've lived my own experience being the person who tried to make somebody who was brokenhearted because of me be friends with me. And I regret that very much now. It hurt them terribly, and that was idiotic. And I'm not going to ever do that again. Well, I'm married now, but, but yeah, I wouldn't do that again. And I've been on the end where, you know, more than once of being the great friend, you know, that gal friend who is just so cool about everything. And it's just, this, it's just more of the same emptiness um, and hoping, you know, hoping. If you love somebody and they are not interested in you, this is what I propose. Um, don't be friends. Don't ever be a fake version of yourself. Just be an honest version of yourself and just say, yeah, well, oh yeah, I can't really be friends because you see, I love you, you know, and you've got to be honest about that. Like that's how I feel and that's not going anywhere. So if you're honest about that, it's funny, you can really shock the world by being yourself and suddenly 
A lot of the stuff that used to just break and turn up empty, it can't do that anymore. It's not an option when you're your honest self. Well, it, it can break. It can like totally just like shut down. When something is kind of a fake thing, when people are, magi are, are relying on magical thinking to kind of, you know, cello tape the whole thing together, <laughs> you know, make it hold as a friendship, honesty will just bust that up so fast. But sometimes if there really is something there, honesty will help the, the nonsense fall away and the true kernel will show up. And the kernel may be that, it's, that there is love there. The true kernel may be that um, there's great affection there. But when you're honest about it, people get an honest chance to decide how, they wanna, how do they want to deal with this. So if he knows that you're in love with him and he doesn't feel that way, he can, you know, he's, you're not tricking him into thinking you're fine. You know, he may want to know. Any, any decent person kind of wants to know what they're dealing with. Now you're young. This may not have happened to you yet. It's happened to me a couple of times where somebody, um, I never knew they had had a feelings for me the whole time. And I found out after a long period of time of friendship and it was just totally awful for me. I felt angry, betrayed. Like, why did you bullshit me about that? Why are you lying? Like I had to think back about everything we had done and it was creepy and weird. Like pretending you're somebody you're not is just, it's not, it serves no one. Yeah, all it serves is, is the, a source for the fantasy that you're using instead of true nourishment right now, you know, like emotional nourishment. Sometimes all we can get is a fantasy for that. But it feels like it must be, we have to resort to fantasy because not having that person or having a period of um, barrenness, you know, we just don't have a love interest in our lives right now. Like that can be really uncomfortable. And it can be all, all this pain can come up and anxiety about the future and a lot of crap from childhood comes up and you don't even know what it is. You just know you're crying all the time. You're depressed. You're having anxiety attacks. But what that is, is, is the stuff coming up that a fantasy relationship or a quasi, you know, friends with benefits thing. That's kind of what you got into here. You, you accidentally became friends with benefits. So that is, that is a way, that's like a very like yucky way to try to avoid what's really painful right now. It's, a, it's an escape, but it's a lousy escape that goes nowhere. It's just going to keep dumping you back in the pool of pain. And the pain you have right now is only going to get more if you keep doing this, if you keep allowing yourself to be treated as a friend with benefits when that's not how you feel. So what you need is friends and support. I'm just going to go through the rest of your letter. Okay, you've been trying to keep the friendship alive, but really only the only way to spend time together is at the workplace. That's inconvenient. I always say to people who are limerent on somebody, and it does sound like you're limerent because you're now obsessing on his social media and stuff. So that's true. It's crossed over into a, uh, you know, your brain is just doing chemicals that are making you addicted right now. And hope is the dope with limerence where you feel sad, you want, you want to get some hope going. And so you arrange things to bump into him or look at social media, just like, I need some hope. I need some hope. I need hope that my feelings will be reciprocated so that I can get through this night, you know, so that I can get through this weekend, this thing I can't face. So you try to initiate everything again. And by this time, he's really distancing himself and it's obvious he doesn't want to spend time with you anymore. So, okay. Tough love chapter three of answering this letter for you, Star. Um, yeah, it's uncomfortable when you, when you get that energy for people. You, I'm just going to use your own language. You said you kind of slipped into a delusion and it does sound like that. And I know it's like, we all do it. It's, it's so understandable. You're not a bad person. You're just having a symptom that's particularly devastating and will mess up your life. And so I'm really urging you to stop, to do what you, to take action against this symptom so that you can stop being limerent. And you said, sometimes he'd be nice, then he'd be distant and cold. I'm just going to lay money on. I think um, he really didn't want things to be bad. And then when you were friendly to him and you acted like everything was okay, he was like, oh, phew, good. Everything's okay. So he would be nice. Then you'd get hope and that sort of obsessive side would kick in. And whether you acted on it or not, people have a nervous system. They feel your energy no matter what you're saying. And if he was feeling that kind of stalker, I don't care what you're saying, I'm going to get you, you know, that thing. It's, it's a frightening feeling to be on the receiving end of that. It's uncomfortable. It's invasive. And so then he would shut it down again. And that is my best guess. I don't know. I don't have his side of the story, but that's my best guess. I, I, you'll see a lot of people on this channel and really they've been watching a lot of 
videos about they're a narcissist, they're a narcissist. That's a phase of healing where you can't yet really like look at your own side of the street. And so I just know people are going to go, that guy's a malignant narcissist. He's a predator. He's using you. But I'm, I just doubt it. I think that's actually quite rare. Um, it's so much more helpful to just realize, hey, he's a person. He's a person who, you know, was sort of clumsy emotionally. He wasn't sure what he was doing. He realized he wasn't into it. It could happen to anybody and it hurt you. But we got to kind of like remove him from the story now because all he is now is somebody who hurts you, whether he wants to or not. He can't be with you because that's not where he's coming from. Um, and yes, you can start a healthy relationship, but you know what? This is like the last thing that people want to hear when they're limerent because it's like, okay, can you give me something even better, like really fast, like, like at four o'clock today, <laughs> right? And it's like, no, it might take a year or two to like do some healing. Whether you date or not, I encourage you to stop having contact with this guy. And uh, I, don't, I don't think there's a good path forward for you if you're working in the same place. And it's sad but true. You're the one who can't deal with it right now. So ask yourself, can you change jobs? It would be so helpful for your healing if you could. And I realize in a few cases, people don't really have control over that. You know, maybe they're in the military or maybe they have a unique skill or, you know, maybe they're, they're the only English speaking person on an island, or, you know, or they're the only in a little tiny group, you know, and they can't go anywhere and there's a commitment. But for the most part, you can change jobs and it would be so powerful and positive for you to do that because the most important thing you can do right now is get that guy out of your mind. Right now, it's your, it's your wounds that are making him seem attractive to you because he's not. He's, he's terrible for you. He's, he's like a guy not into you. He's a guy who brings up pain in you all the time. He's like poison. It's like eating snail poison. You know, don't eat it. You don't want to eat it. You, your mind is going to say, eat it, eat it. It'll be different this time, but it's not. So the more you can just like get out of that, just get out of there, that would be really helpful. And then no contact, no more texting. Don't say goodbye. Nothing is necessary. And then discipline yourself to stop talking about him. Every time you talk about him, you activate all the brain chemistry. Every time you talk about him, that part of you is going to try to find hope in the whole thing. And that distorted thinking will come in and go, ah, oh, gotcha. I'm going to distort this. No, there is hope. There is hope. You know, he's so wonderful in this way. I'm going for it. You don't want to give, don't give that any space. Like just logically, this is a dead end for you. So getting it out of your mind and out of, just don't talk about it. That's a lot of, you're going to have, if you have women friends, that's what women friends do is talk about the guys who hurt them, talk about the guys they hate, talk about the guys they hope will like them. You know, we talk about guys, but this guy has to just, just take him out of, the, out of your, you know, just try to get him off of your mind. And then the last, the last frontier is in your mind and your thoughts about him. So this is what I suggest to you. You'll give yourself a half hour twice a day when it's okay to talk to him. Actually, better yet, 15 minutes twice a day where you can think about him. Don't talk to other people. Don't keep trying to make this real. Don't try to get other people's validation of it, um, except if they are people who are actively on the road to recovery with you. I'll get to that in a minute. But you stop thinking about it. So one thing you can do that's more productive than just sitting there thinking, because what you're doing, you know, if you're sitting there going into the whole thing of stalking, what's happening is you're going into rumination, you know, fantasy rumination, trying to think of scenarios. Maybe if I said this, maybe if I did 10 days of not speaking and then all of a sudden I showed up in this really nice dress and then I acted very aloof, but then I laughed and then he got jealous. You know, you're always like calculating, right? How do I reel him in? How do I do this? Anything but just being myself. When you are yourself, most of these things, they just sort of will drift away from you like, you know, like a little floating thing on a stream, they just drift away from you. And you go in there, it's like, oh, it's getting out of reach. You want to jump in, you want to save it, but it's drifting away. So you stop talking about them, you stop thinking about them, but you can, if you use my daily practice techniques, you may know about that. I talk about it endlessly in my videos, but uh, it's a very specific writing technique, meditation. There's a free course I teach. You can, uh, it's, there's a link to it down below in the description section, or go to my website, free course, daily practice, takes about an hour to learn and try the techniques for the first time. And then, you know, you keep practicing them twice a day and you're going to find it really like it gives you finally like a really safe outlet for all that stormy, the stormy thinking inside. And I do it twice a day all the time anyway, on good days and bad. It's not always stormy in here, but why it's not always stormy in here is because I'm always sort of doing my hygiene. You know, it's just like my stormy thoughts, fear and resentment, getting them out 
making space for something new, which is very, very healing. As a person who had childhood trauma, you need loving people in your life. And those are not likely to, you know, occasionally people just find their partner very early in life and they have their person. But that does tend to be a little bit like a hermetically sealed thing. A really nice path is to make friends. This would be women friends. And they are and finding women friends who are like you, healing from trauma and working on cultivating a better way to date and um, eventually end up in a relationship that they would really, the kind they really want. So that's, those are the kinds of friends. There's, there's friends who go out drinking. There's friends who just sit around and smack talk about stuff. But I recommend to you, you find ones who are really on the path and you can find them in 12 step meetings. You can find them in my membership program. You can, uh, uh, you know, the thing about 12 step programs is if there's going to be meetings in your town and you can have face to face meetings with them. And a lot of people who go to 12 step also use my daily practice or, you know, participate in my membership stuff because we're focusing on trauma specifically. And there's a little bit of that. There's a program called Adult Children of Alcoholics and Other Dysfunctional Families. There's Al Anon. If you are blessed with an addiction or alcoholism, there's very strong fellowships for that. But there you would find people. Um, and perhaps a sponsor, somebody who would kind of mentor you in how to do this that would be so helpful to try to basically learn the things that other people must have learned when they were kids by their parents being really present, teaching them one little incident at a time. It's like, oh, don't talk that, you know, when somebody treats you that way, do this. You know, for those of us who just didn't get any of that and had to make it up as we went along, like feral cats, 12 step is fantastic. And, um, so, and we'd of course love to have you in our group. So I hope that helps Star. Um, if any of you watching, if you think that complex PTSD trauma in your childhood affected your ability to date properly, I have a quiz, a relationship quiz, where you can check off and see if you show this common symptoms. Those are on the free tools page of my website. That is linked in the description section or just head on over to crappychildhoodfairy.com, free tools. You'll find quizzes there and the free course and lots of free things that you can begin right away to feel better today. If you love this topic, if you also have found yourself playing the cool girl, ending up surprised that somebody's not as into you as you thought, I've got a video lined up for you and it's called How Abandonment Wounds Cue Partners to Discard You. And that video is right there and I will see you very soon.